Hi! In today's video we are going to discuss anti-lock braking systems. We'll see some myths and facts about them, see how this system looks on actual bike, how it works, what it does and ultimately we are going to decide if we want this system on our bike. A little spoiler. In some cases we do and in some we don't. Let's start from the beginning. Why we have this ABS system in the first place? What exactly its purpose and are there any alternatives? On a motorcycle a really fast effective braking is not an easy task. Unlike on a car we can't just slam the brake pedal into the floor to stop fast. You can rightfully say that it's not the best practice on car either, but you know, the car certainly can slide, which is not good, but at least it won't low side or high side, or flip over the nose, like the motorcycle will do. Obviously, if we want to stop really fast on a bike, we can't just grab the brakes with all our force and hope for the best. On the other hand, we also can't brake too gentle either, because it significantly increases our stopping distance. So, in the nutshell, the main problem with fast, effective braking on a motorcycle is that we need to perfectly find this sweet spot, where we are braking strongly enough, so we have good short stopping distance, and at the same time we are not braking too hard, so we don't slide or flip over the handlebars. And it's easier said than done, it takes us quite a lot of practice to learn how to brake fast. And also, we have to practice this skill frequently to stay in shape. A lot of riders don't do it, so if we look almost at any motorcycle crash compilation video, we'll see plenty of cases with either insufficient braking or with over braking. Besides practicing braking a lot, how can we solve this problem? Is there any way to make our bike brake as much as needed, but not too much? In theory, we could make some sort of braking system tailored for each specific bike, which would make exactly enough braking force and not more. The problem here is that in real situations we have a lot of variables. If we make such a tailored braking system, which makes exactly enough braking force, then if we, for example, put a passenger and luggage on our bike, our braking system will suddenly become underpowered and we'll have too long braking distance. On the other hand, if we go right in the rain, we'll have significantly less traction and even with our specific braking system for the specific bike, we are going to be able to over brake and fall down. So unfortunately, we have to find another solution. And this solution came in the form of anti-lock braking system. What exactly it does? Just like in previous example, it adjusts the power of our braking system. But it doesn't do it for our bike only once. It adjusts on the go, depending on current situation. How it works? On each wheel we have a special perforated plate, like this. When our bike goes forward, the wheel rolls and this sensor here reads how fast our perforated plate rotates which gives the ABS electronics the angular speed of our wheel. Then the angular speed of both wheels is compared to each other by the ABS. If one of the wheels starts to slip, it loses the angular speed. Here is an example when I locked the rear completely and it has zero angular speed. But electronics in fact react much earlier, long before the wheel is completely locked. If the system sees that one of the wheels starts to rotate slower than other, it reduces the braking force on this wheel, until both wheels have the same speed again. And modern ABS can do it very fast, up to 40 times per each second. All this magic happens here, at the ABS module. It has two main parts, the actual hydraulic part, with lines and valves which uh, regulate the pressure on the brakes, and electronic part, which reads the signals from sensors, adjusts them for wheel diameter, compares them and decides if it needs to reduce the braking force on one of the brakes. That's how a basic anti-lock system works. 
more sophisticated systems can have additional stuff, like for example, they can read the pressure in the brake lines. And if for example system sees that rear wheel locks up with almost zero pressure in the brake line, that means that rear wheel doesn't touch the ground anymore. So the module reduces the pressure on the front brake to prevent the stopping. That's how anti-stopper works. In even more advanced system, ABS module can gather data from acceleration sensors, so it also understands the cornering speed and in case of brake in mid-corner can adjust the braking force, for example, to prevent the bike from standing up. That's how cornering ABS works. Also in the hydraulic part, front and rear brake lines can be connected and the system can regulate pressure in both channels in relation to each other. For example, it can increase pressure on the front and at the same time reduce it on the rear, since under heavy braking the traction on the rear tire also fades. That's how the linked brakes work, like on new BMWs for example. But the core of any anti-lock system is the same. It's a module which has some sensor input and based on this input it regulates pressure in our brake lines. Cool! Now, when we know how anti-lock braking system works, let's see its advantages and disadvantages and decide for ourselves if we want it on our bike. The biggest advantage is obviously that ABS prevents us from locking up our wheels. That's what it's designed for. That means we no longer have to fear that we put too much force into our brakes. And that's good, even if we regularly practice hard braking, because we still have to consider a lot of variables, like if the road is dirty, oily or wet, or the temperature is too low, stuff like that. Even if we practice braking regularly, chances are we don't specifically do it on different surfaces. So in this case, ABS is a very good safety net which allows us to brake at maximum available force without the fear of skidding the tires. Also, that means that under hard braking we can pay much less attention to the brakes and we can divert this attention to something else, like to the road situation, for example. And for the inexperienced rider, anti-lock system is literally a life safer feature, because even if we just slam on both bikes in full panic mode, we will not lock the brakes and our stopping distance will be pretty good. And it's a fact. If we look up the statistics, we'll clearly see that ABS significantly reduces the chances of getting in serious accident. The exact number in different studies may vary, but they are usually between 20 and 45 percent, which is quite a lot. ABS clearly, without a doubt, increases the safety of the bike, so much that in a lot of countries now ABS is a mandatory feature on a lot of bikes. By the way, I have an exclusive footage from headquarters of Bosch company, which produces the majority of ABS modules. It was recorded a few days prior when the ABS became mandatory in Europe. Let's roll the video! Gentlemen, in exactly five days we will be 100 billion dollars richer. <laughs> <laughs> Now, let's see some drawbacks to ABS system as well. First, it's obviously the cost. All this stuff, the module, sensors and brake lines cost money. More so, bikes equipped with ABS are mostly from more expensive lines, only recently small cheap bikes are being equipped with ABS as well. So if you are on a budget and you are looking for something used and cheap, Probably it'll be a bit difficult to find a good bike with ABS. Second thing is that ABS components have some weight. The module itself usually weighs a couple of kilos. Sensors, discs and additional brake lines also add some. And the last drawback, weirdly enough, is that ABS doesn't let us skid our tires. In some cases we want our bike to lock up a tire. Usually it is used for loose ground while riding off-road where we can have more stop and power by locking up the rear wheel. By loose surfaces I don't mean a little sand on the pavement, I mean surfaces for knobby tires. That's why on proper off-road bikes there is no ABS, 
and on dual sports, ABS we can usually switch off. Generally, in any sport application we also don't need ABS much. Like in stunt, for example, we definitely don't need ABS, because often we want to skid the tire. For Moto Gymkhana we also don't need ABS much, because usually for this sport we use older, cheaper bikes, which we don't mind dropping, and older anti-lock systems don't work very well on lower speeds. Modern ones are good even at slow speeds. But I don't know, for me it doesn't look like a good idea to drop some new shiny BMW multiple times a day. For track riding ABS is debatable. In addition to less weight, on normal bike we have a brake line straight from the brake cylinder to the brake calipers. With all the additional brake lines to the module and back to the calipers, we will lose some feedback on the brake. But it really starts to make any difference only for very high-level riders. On the other hand, on track there is much less surprises than on the road. So all our braking is more predictable on each lap. So do you need an ABS on your bike? If you are planning to ride mostly on public roads, yes, definitely pick the bike with ABS. The advantages are much bigger than drawbacks. If you are planning to go off-road or do some sporty stuff, it depends on your particular situation. Now, let's see some myth about anti-lock braking systems on motorcycles. First one, which is the most popular, is that without ABS we'll stop faster, therefore we don't need it. I wouldn't say it's completely wrong, there is some truth to that. Indeed, when applying a correct braking technique, we can brake a little faster than just by slamming the brakes and relying on ABS. Me and my students experimented quite a lot on different bikes, and yes, with correct braking procedure we definitely can outbrake the ABS. Those were not really true scientific experiments. We just did a bunch of braking with and without ABS and took an average uh, numbers as the results. On older bikes the difference usually was noticeable, around 5-10%. On modern bikes the difference was much less. So considering the measuring practices, uh, I think uh, it's safe to say that uh, results with and without ABS were pretty much identical. However, one thing is to compare results which we achieve over and over again on the same piece of pavement. And another thing is real life, where the braking can be unexpected and not always on ideal pavement. In this situation I bet it will be much more challenging to outbreak the ABS. So even if you are an experienced rider and you know what you are doing, it's still a good practice to have an ABS as safety feature, just in case you over brake. And as I already said, it makes you a bit more confident, plus you can spend more attention to other stuff than braking, which is a very good thing. Second popular myth is that we don't need ABS on slower bikes. Like, oh, this bike's top speed is only 80 miles per hour, why do you need an ABS on it? In reality, we can lock up the tire even at pretty low speeds, like you can see here. Yes, it's much better to drop the bike at this speed than, let's say, at 100 miles per hour. But I think really it's not a very pleasant experience. ABS would be pretty useful in those situations. Third myth is that we must learn how to brake on a normal bike. That ABS somehow prevents us from learning how to brake. From my experience, it's quite the opposite. When learning the correct fast braking procedure, a student learns much faster on ABS equipped bike, because he doesn't fear to over brake. When a new rider over brakes on normal bike, he usually spills it. With the ABS, he just receives some shivering on the brake lever and stops one or two feet further. So he can learn this precise braking threshold much faster. Ok, I think I've covered all I wanted, if you want to know something more about ABS, please ask me in the comment section. If you like my videos, check out my new training video courses in the description, both for beginners and for advanced riders. 
They are pretty effective motorcycle trailing tools, and they have braking exercises in them as well. And please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye!